the introduction to class diagrams in Papyrus, and I've opened my, my sample model. Um, and for this, I'll just create, as always, a new package where I put all my class contents. And in here, I will also create my diagram. Now, class diagrams have a lot of things that can be contained in them, and I obviously won't cover all of them, um, but that's why the, the palette is rather big. Lots of different elements. Um, but most common are, are, of course, classes, so you can draw classes here. No magic. Um, and, well, I can give them different names. So I could say that this is my... Uh, for example, patient records, and we can say we have some prescriptions, maybe, and a record entry. And then there are other things you can do here, like saying that a class is abstract, for example, and change the visibility of it. Um, now, we, we would probably like to add attributes and operations to classes and you can either do that by clicking on a class and then you have owned attribute owned operation uh, and you can add things here so I can just simply click on this and say I would like to have a property for example uh, and then I can create it here so let's say the patient record has a patient ID uh, that is of a certain type so we would like to select the type for example integer in this case. Uh, and again, there are a lot of other things. Read-only, unique, derived, order static, and you have the visibility. You also have the multiplicity here, so you can also say I would like to have zero to many IDs, for example. <coughs> now it doesn't turn up here out of some reason, which is not very nice, um, but I should also be able to pull it in here, so now I see it. Uh, as an alternative, you can use the palette again, so you can choose property here and s simply say prescription has, for example, a name. Operations work in pretty much the same way. You can select one here and drop it uh, onto a class if you select the right container, so the second one here, uh, you can, for example, call it order. And an operation, of course, has parameters, so you can add parameters here. You can also add a lot of other things, but in this case, let's just add one parameter where we say quantity, maybe. Quantity is of type int. And here you also have integer object, by the way, if you want the object representation, not the primitive type. Um, and you see here in is the direction, so this is a parameter that goes in. Um, we might also want to have a return type, then we change the direction to return. Uh, we say, for example, maybe we just get a, a confirmation, which is some kind of ID in our case, for example. So let's say it's also integer. Um, and then here it just shows that in, if you click on the uh, operation, you see that here it, it's a parameter that has this kind of return arrow. So there's something goes in here and here is something that returns. Now this is all pretty straightforward. Um, you can also create interfaces and enums and so on, basically whatever you would feel like. And data types, comments, of course, uh, even components are allowed in class diagrams. And of course, you can also package here. So you can say, we would like to have a sub package. And that's exactly what I'll call it now. And you can just simply put classes in there. So that's, of course, also possible. Um, but now we would maybe like to connect them, and that's what all the associations are for. So I could say a patient record has a number of record entries. And right now, by default, it has one, so that's not very nice. That's not what we want. Uh, first of all, let's call this entry here. And let's say the multiplicity is zero to many. Also, we could say maybe this is more of a composition, so you can choose that in the aggregation. So you have non-shared and composite, uh, and 
just to note this uh, since quite a while ago actually uh, aggregation is not called aggregation anymore but shared so if I click on shared you'll see the, the empty diamond uh, if you click on composite you see the, the composite the filled diamond now <coughs> what else can we do here we can say who is owning the uh, the association and this is later important if you want to do code generation um, and that's basically described by this dot there so if I change this to association uh, it will just show it in this way if I change it back to classifier I, I get my dot back and if I also change this one to classifier uh, I also get the dot back here which now looks a bit hilarious but let's change that so that, that's an important detail for some cases for most people it's not that important um, and I think that's basically it for the association. Um, of course, now we have an interface here. We can say the patient record uh, realizes that interface. And then similarly as, uh, to the component diagram, we will use the interface realization. So now my patient record implements this interface, which in this case doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but that's exactly what we can do. There are quite a lot of other things that I typically don't use. Maybe one thing is the association class, which can be useful um, to say that, well, for every for every patient record that creates one prescription, we would like to have some kind of uh, some kind of log. Let's say this is maybe something we have to do officially. Um, so we can use association classes for this. And then I simply draw from patient record to prescription uh, and it will create this uh, arrow together with the association class. And now I simply have to uh, have to give this a name. Um, and we could say this is for example a hospital record. So it's something the hospital takes care of or it, it records it if I prescribe something. Maybe it doesn't matter, but now I have it means what forever whenever an instance of patient record creates or owns an instance of prescriptions, then there will also be an instance of hospital records. Let's see. Well, obviously, one thing there's generalization, uh, so inheritance. You could say that maybe there is a uh, we would like to have a specific type of record, so we add another class. Uh, so there is a prescription entry so the nurse or the doctor makes a note whenever a prescription is made uh, and I can say that maybe this is a special type of the record entry and then I have the generalization um, and I think this is what I will discuss for uh, for the class diagram. There are, of course, a lot of other things you can do. For example, you could you could create uh, templates. You could create template types. Um, but this is all more advanced UML. If you really know what you what you want to do, the usage in Papyrus is pretty straightforward. I would say.